guys, I am finally doing the bookshelf tour and I'm really excited because I've got four shelves in my room, two of which are small and two of which are tall and I'm really excited to show you which books are where and everything like that so yeah, I'm going to do part one today which is my two small bookcases, part two will be my two tall ones if I think it's worth doing them both at the same time I might do them separately so it might be a three part bookshelf tour and after that if you guys want this I have my bookshelf of DVDs and my little video stand and my game stand and my CD stand and all that stuff so if you want to see that as well leave a comment but otherwise I'm not going to do that because obviously this is a book channel and they're not book related so yeah let's get on with my two small bookshelves oh and by the way America happy 4th of July well done on your independence Okay, so the first little shelf I have to show you guys is actually the one that sits on my coffee table. And this is the shelf of books I've borrowed from either the library, from school, from my teachers or friends, that kind of thing. So I put all of these here so I don't mix them in with my own books and then forget I have them and never return them. So over here, the first few books are borrowed from teachers by the way, and then these two books over here, the two manga volumes, are borrowed from the library. So I have... Mr. Pip by Lloyd Jones, which I've read. I've read the first three of these actually, and I've written reviews, so I'll link to my reviews in the description because I always put my blog links and stuff down there, so it's really good, so you should check it out. Then I have The Shadow of the Wind by Carlos Ruiz Zafon, which was an absolutely brilliant book. I would highly recommend it to all of you. I gave it 5 out of 5, and I rated everything in it 5 out of 5. The characters, plot, writing, and ending, it was just so, so good, and I have no idea how to tell you guys how good it is and yeah it was it was honestly just a brilliant book after that I have The Voyage of the Frog by Gary Paulson and I gave this a four so those three I've read and I'm moving on to the ones I haven't now I've got A Thousand Splendid Sons by Khalid Hosseini who wrote The Kite Runner and I'm looking forward to reading both of those in summer because they're supposed to be really really good then I've got Zed for Zachariah by Robert C. O'Brien, and I know that Andrew from Heavy Shelves did a review on this. I think I mentioned that in a couple of videos before, and I'll link to that in the description as well because I really enjoyed watching his thoughts on the book. And the final book I am borrowing from a teacher is Watership Down by Richard Adams, and I'm really hoping this isn't sad, but I think it will be considering that the books that I've borrowed from this one teacher um, he's my ex-media teacher, he has given me ones that have sad things in them, like, in every single one something depressing happens, so I'm kind of guessing that his entire bookshelf is built up of depressing books, so I'm really hoping that that isn't sad as well, but I know it will be, because he has a bookshelf of depressing things! So next to that, I have, these are from the library now, Bakuman Volume 1 by Tsugumi Oba and Takeshi Obata, I have learnt that name now, I am good with it, I can pronounce it very well, so I'll put that back. And then the final book is Siren Volume 1 by Toshiaki Iwashiro, and I'm, I don't know anything about these two manga volumes, but since I don't read different series, I'm thinking of branching out and seeing what I like as well. So, yeah, little... I love the bookends, by the way, these match, and I've been looking for them for ages, I used to have them when I was a kid, but I lost them and now I found them, so they're being put to use on this shelf. Okay, so here are the two bookshelves I'm going to be showing you guys today. But before I actually show you the books, I'm going to show you what's on top, because I think that all my stuff up there is really cool. And yeah, I just think that you guys might be interested in seeing what I decorate my bookshelves with. I'm sorry to say that this part of the tour is actually going to be handheld, so yeah, this is just a brief look at what I've got up here. So I'm going to start back over here. I have a little unicorn toy which relates to a joke that me and my friends have about the Skullduggery Pleasant series. Most of this side is related to Skullduggery Pleasant and this side is my Dot 2 stuff just so that sort of puts that in your mind. So yeah that's part of a joke. Then here I have a leprechaun which relates to Derek Landy because he's Irish and he signed its butt because that's appropriate obviously. Then I have a skull piggy bank which I don't really use and he signed this here, here and here and I really love this because you can get him to sign it in a different place every time I meet him and it's really really fun. This little guy I got sent from America and he dances when it's sunny because he has a solar panel 
So this is really cute and he makes a noise if it's like really really sunny. So that's creepy. Um, here I have my iPhone case which I got Derek to sign but I am not using it at the minute because the tape really annoys me. I've got a tube which I use to hold my posters that Derek nicked and signed. I have another tube but the other side of it has my address on so I've turned it around for this video. This giant thing is from the signing I went to in Liverpool last year on Saturday the 15th of September and I got him to sign it when he came to Leeds because that's where I live. Don't stalk me please. And it made me look like I was wearing a cape. So yeah, that's an interesting picture. Here I have my TARDIS money box which I actually do use, all my money's in here. If you want to steal it, if you come and rob my house. I have Martha Jones looking rather strange. Um, I've got my black Dalek and my bronze Dalek because different colour Daleks are cool. I have racial equality in terms of colours of Daleks here. Then I've got the Doctor, the Ninth Doctor and Rose Tyler holding hands because it's my OTP. And then my card box TARDIS thing, which doesn't actually have my cards in it anymore because I took them out and put them in my folder. And finally I have a lamp and a blob of white tack. Yay! So on the first shelf of my first bookcase we have, well, an awful lot of Skullduggery Pleasant books, if nothing else. This is basically my collection of the books. There are the different editions, the hardbacks, the paperbacks, the coloured paperbacks, the special edition hardbacks and the trade paperbacks and all this stuff. I collect them all because they're really awesome and I love the series. It's my favourite series ever. So yeah, I'm going to show you the different books in this series because it's cool and I'm hoping that these ones up here will not fall down. So yeah, let's try and do this. Um, I'm going to start with my proof copy, which is here, and obviously all these books are by Derek Landy. I've met him seven times now, and he's the most awesome guy ever, so if you can meet him, do. So this is my proof copy. I got this from the focus group in 2010, and that was amazing. And yeah, uncorrected proof, not for sale or quotation, just... Casual. Go back here. This is the worst part of bookshelf tours. You can't get the books back in. Then the second book is Playing With Fire. Here. That's the proof copy of the first book, so I'm not going to show you the first book. And this is also by Derek Landy, funnily enough. The third book is The Faceless Ones, and this is the limited collector's edition with the coloured cover. On the normal covers, it's um, just plain black and white, but on these ones, you have full colour, which is cooler, obviously. So that's book three. Book four is Dark Days, and this is my favourite special edition, because look at the colours on that. That is beautiful and scary. So that's book four. Book five is Mortal Coil, and this is the only one I have that doesn't have a sticker on. <laughs> it's a sad story, guys. Book six is Deathbringer, in my opinion, the least appealing special edition cover. Book seven, Kingdom of the Wicked, and the only change on this special edition is the colour of the writing thing, like the shiny stuff. It's red instead of gold, which is pretty rubbish. So, yeah, there wasn't really much money value there. And the last different book on the shelf is the novella, The Maleficent Seven, which I should probably move so you can see it. And I got this early from HarperCollins because they love me and they know of my existence due to the fact that they see me at pretty much every event he does in the UK and Ireland. Well, not Ireland, but it will be Ireland this September, so fear me, Irish people. And then this thing here, which you might not be able to see, is a folder of the newsletters I make for the series, and some of them are my quiz things so yeah it's basically a folder of stuff so down here continues my skullduggery pleasant collection these are the new paperbacks and the first bind up edition which is this giant thing here i got this at the last event i went to and it is absolutely massive and it contains book one skullduggery pleasant and book two playing with fire so if you want to start the series this will be a great thing to get as it's cheap for value, it's 9 99 for two books and if you like the first one you don't have to wait for the second one which is the best feeling ever 
So yeah, I won't go through these again because they're the same, but this thing here is the Little World Book Day novella which came out last year in 2012 and it is the end of the world which is really cool if you want to try out the series and you don't know if you like it or not this is like a taster thing that doesn't impact on the other events so it's a really good thing to read if you want to try out the series and you don't know if you like it next to that we have obviously Harry Potter this shelf is pretty much my favorite books so I have my ultimate favourite series at the top and then my other series as they come in favouriteness that doesn't really make sense after it but anyway my childhood favourite series was the Harry Potter series so we have the Philosopher's Stone the Chamber of Secrets the Prisoner of Azkaban The Goblet of Fire, The Order of the Phoenix, The Half-Blood Prince, and finally The Deathly Hallows, which I read in under 11 hours when I was about 9, so that was quite a massive achievement for me, so yeah, let's move on. I'm just going to angle it a slightly bit this way so I can hopefully not get my face stuck. We have the Hunger Games trilogy and I'm planning on reading these in summer because I've only ever read the Hunger Games. So we have the Hunger Games, hence the name of the series. Catching Fire and the movie for this comes out in November I believe so I'm really looking forward to that as well as the Dot 2 50th anniversary and all that kind of stuff. And finally we have Mockingjay, which is pretty much Marmite in book form because you either love it or hate it, apparently. So, yeah. Ugh, I hope my face isn't here. And finally, right at the end, if I can get these out, it will be a miracle. Let's try this. We have the Chronicles of Narnia. Woo! So, in order, we have The Magician's Nephew, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and I love this cover so much. Just look at that, that is beautiful, I love it so much. Then The Horse and His Boy, which is one of my favourites as well. Prince Caspian, I haven't actually seen the film for this or the one for The Voyage of the Dawn Treader but I'm looking forward to doing it eventually. The Voyage of the Dawn Treader, as I just mentioned. The Silver Chair, and The Last Battle, which I've actually not read in its entirety, but I've read the last few pages and that ruined the entire thing for me. I was such an idiotic kid, but I read it and I was crushed by the reality of what happens. So, yeah, lesson for you guys, never do that. Okay, so my mini tripod is sat on the floor and I'm really hoping I don't knock it over for this. So, if you can actually see these books down this end, we have the entire series of... Percy Jackson and the Olympians, and then the first three books in the Heroes of Olympus. But right over here, in this corner, we have the Red Pyramid, which is the first in the Cain Chronicles, and these are all by Rick Riordan. So this will be fun, fun, fun. Let's try and get that back in there. Here we have the mini Demigod Files, and this is basically about all of the demigods and gods in it, I think. I haven't read this yet, actually should probably get onto that. Maybe I'll add it to my uh, really extensive summer reads list. Good idea. Um, now moving on to the actual Percy Jackson and the Olympians. We have the Lightning Thief. This is the awkward part of bookshelf doors. The Sea of Monsters. The Titan's Curse, The Battle of the Labyrinth, and the last one is The Last Olympian, and I haven't finished this series yet, I'm yet to read Battle of the Labyrinth and The Last Olympian, but I will eventually get onto them, I swear. I haven't read any of these, haha! -ha. 
very i spent how much if it's 12.99 each that's 13 quid each that's 39 quid i've spent on these three and i haven't read them yet good choice anyway um there is the lost hero go back in go back in the son of neptune And the Mark of Athena, and I think the fourth one is House of Hades, and I believe that comes out at some point later in the year. So I am really looking forward to buying that and not reading it for another however long. Good choice of money. Um, here I have a proof copy of Department 19 by Will Hill, and I got this when I got the proof copy of Scullery Pleasant as well. This was the other proof that I got whilst at the focus group, because we got 50 quid. A free book which turned into like three books. I didn't really understand that, but whatever. Then I've got Department 19, which is the actual book in its printed form. And I haven't read any of these because I'm terrible, but I know I'll really like them because I've met the author and they're amazing. So we have Department 19 The Rising, which is book two. And then here, the most recent one which came out in March. Department 19 Battle Lines, and the fourth one comes out next March, I believe, so that's cool. Just going to move you along a bit so it's more comfortable for me. There we are. Here we have the first two books in the Perfect Chemistry series. We have Perfect Chemistry, and these are by Simone Elkeles, or Elkeles, or however you say this, because I've never really known how you say it. Rules of Attraction, so those are those two. Here we have the first four books in Curtis Jobling's Wereworld series. He's the man who created Bob the Builder, if you ever saw that on whatever channel it was on. I think it was CBeebies in the UK, so if you've ever seen it, that's the guy who made it. So we've got The Rise of the Wolf, Rage of Lions, Ooh. Shadow of the Hawk, and then this is a pain in my butt. Nest of Serpents. That is a disgusting cover. I don't know why they changed them to the American ones because I really loved these ones. And he said he'd show me it, but he never has. So Curtis, you should show me the other cover and then make a edition specially for me because I deserve to have matching covers. And then the final two books on here are Hollow Earth and Bone Quill which are the first two books, if there are any more, in the Hollowworth series by John Barrowman and Carolee Barrowman, who are brother and sister. And I'd just like to take this moment to say congratulations to John, because he recently got married to his boyfriend, Scott Gill, in California, and I'm really happy that they're finally together, because America has legalised same-sex marriage, so go America! It's Independence Day, have fun! with same-sex marriage. Okay, so as you guys may be now aware, this is my Doctor Who empire, so I'm going to basically take you along the shelf, handheld, and basically just read out the names and titles and stuff. So, yeah, let's go! Okay, so beginning over here on the left, the first book we have is Doctor Who and the Daleks, and this is by David Whittaker, and there is a foreword by Neil Gaiman, who writes a lot of books, and um, people really enjoy his stuff, so I should probably pick up one of his books sometime soon. I've got The Monsters Inside by Stephen Cole. The good thing about these books is, generally, they're really easy to get back in, so I'm really happy. Only Human by Gareth Roberts. The Stealers of Dreams by Steve Lyons. Winner Takes All by Jacqueline Rayner, and this is my favourite Doctor Who novel ever. It is so, so good, and I really love it. The Clockwise Man by Justin Richards. The Deviant Strain by Justin Richards, and I don't know if it's Deviant or Deviant. I think it's probably Deviant, but there we go, so there you go. The Resurrection Casket by Justin Richards. The Stone Rose by Jacqueline Rayner, and this is another of my favourites. If you sort of put it together with everything else, it is just so brilliant. The Feast of the Drowned by Stephen Cole. This one freaked me out to no end. The Art of Destruction by Stephen Cole. The Price of Paradise by Colin Brake. 
The Nightmare of Black Island by Mike Tucker. Peacemaker by James Swallow, and this is a brilliant novel for those who love westerns. It is actually awesome. The Many Hands by Dale Smith, even. That looks like Dave from here, but it isn't. It's Dale Smith. The Story of Martha by Dan Abnett with David Roden, Steve Lockley and Paul Lewis, Robert Shearman and Simon Jowett. Wow, just so many people in that one. There is Forever Autumn by Mark Morris. Wet World by Mark Michalowski. Really hope I said that right. Wooden Heart by Martin Day. Snow Globe 7 by Mike Tucker. Sting of the Zygons by Stephen Cole. And I'm really excited to see the Zygons in action because they're coming back for the 50th anniversary. And I've never seen them because I haven't watched many of the old episodes. So I'm really excited to see that because I love this book. The Last Dodo by Jacqueline Rayner. Wishing Well by Trevor Baxendale. Sick Building by Paul Mars. And I know you say his name Mars now because he's got this blog called Life on Mars. And I didn't understand until I actually realised you don't say it Magers. Shining Darkness by Mark Michalowski. And finally we have... Ghosts of India by Mark Morris. Cool, guys. So, yeah, that's that shelf. Oh my god, this is going to be the most awkward shelf to do ever because there's so many tall books and then short books. So let's have a go at this. All the way at this end, we have this little paper magazine thing that my dad got out of the mirror. And it's just about some things in Doctor Who, I think. So I did put this on here just because it's the only place it would go. Then I've got... The book thing from the Doctor Who experience, because I went to that when it was in London, and the front opens into the TARDIS, which is really, really cool. Then we have the official 2007 annual, and these are pretty much all annuals at this end now, so let's just keep going with this. There is the official 2008 annual. storybook from 2008 and I've never seen another storybook it is literally the only one that I have so I'd be surprised if they even did any more of these there is the 2009 annual you can see where this is going oops the 2010 annual this is where it starts to go <laughs> David then we go into the 2011 annual when Matt Smith took over. I don't much like Matt Smith, he's not my favourite Doctor. I did prefer David to him, but I really do like him and I'll miss him now that he's going as well. There's the 2012 annual. And finally, <laughs> we have the 2013 annual, funnily enough. So there we go. That's my annual collection. This is the Torchwood Archives, which basically discusses all the things that they did in Torchwood. Because I also watch Torchwood, I love Torchwood so much, and I wish they'd do another series sometime soon. These four books are all based on different things. We have Monsters and Villains. Oh god, this is so awkward. Aliens and Enemies. These are all by the BBC, by the way, they don't actually have a set author, so that's why I'm not telling you. There, oops, I don't want you yet. Creatures and Demons. And finally, there is Starships and Space Stations. And I got three of these from a friend at school because he was clearing out his books and he found these and he doesn't even watch the show anymore. So thank you, Michael, because I really do love these. Um, where am I? I'm here. So let's try and do this. We have The Doctor Who's Who, which is by Craig Cabell. And this basically tells you about each Doctor and who played them and all that kind of stuff. So it's really good if you want to learn more about the actors. Here is a random book I picked up from my school book swap. It is The Cybermen. It's one of the 
Doctor Who Files, it's number 8, and I don't have any of the others, but I might pick them up. I haven't read this yet, but it literally cost me 20 pence, so I thought, why not? Um, this is Timeless Adventures, How Doctor Who Conquered TV by Brian J. Robb. And I think this basically tells you all about how Doctor Who started out and what happened, so that's pretty cool. Um, this is getting increasingly hard to put them back. <laughs> Come on, man. Oh, it's stuck on the other book, that's why. Um, I've got A Life in Time and Space, the biography of David Tennant by Nigel Goodall, and this is revised and updated, but still unofficial. And it's basically all about David Tennant's time in the TARDIS. And it's got some pictures in the middle, so let's see if I can find a good one to show you. Let's have a look. Ah, oh, this one's lovely. Here we go. This one is of David and Eve Miles, and Eve Miles plays, um, what's the name? Gwen from Torchwood, and she also played Gwyneth in, oh god, which episode was it? It was the one with the Gelf, I've forgotten what it's actually called, but she was in that one and she's a brilliant actress and I really love her. And then I've got the other book that I have by Paul Mars and it is The Diary of a Doctor Who Addict and this represents me in more ways than one. And it's a really quick and lovely read if you like Doctor Who. Highly relatable as well, just saying. Then I've got the Sontaran Games, which is by... Jacqueline Rayner again, and this is only one ninety nine because it's a quick read, and I really enjoyed this. Why did this goes here? I'm starting to lose my mind. I've got some more books which should be on the shelf above, but they don't fit. So I have Beautiful Chaos by Gary Russell. The Taking of Chelsea 426 by David Llewellyn. The Slovene Excursion by Simon Guerrier. That is a really weird name. Prisoner of the Daleks by Trevor Baxendale. The Krillitane Storm by Christopher Cooper. And finally, there is The Eyeless by Lance Parkin. And that concludes all of the... Oh no, it doesn't. There is one more one more of the um, David Tennant books and the Ninth Doctor books. Basically, they don't do them that size anymore. They do them in the new ones, which you can see right here. But the next and last one is this one, which is Judgment of the Jadoon by Colin Brake. That doesn't fit, so it has to go up here with the rest of the Renegade books that can't go anywhere else. So starting on Matt Smith, we have The Glamour Chase by Gary Russell. The King's Dragon by Una McCormack. Borrowed Time by Naomi A. Alderman. I hope I'm not in your way, by the way. Night of the Humans by David Llewellyn. They have like a set um, list of authors, I think, that do these books, so that's why you get the same names over and over. There's Apollo 23 by Justin Richards. And last but not least, there is The Forgotten Army by Brian Minchin, and there are actually some more Doctor Who books that I haven't picked up yet, but as you can see I don't really have anywhere for them right now, so I will have to pick those up in a while. So let's move along and zoom in a tad so that you can see, there we are, let's just leave it there. So I've already looked at this one, so I'll just put this one here for now. I have the first two, no I have two of the quiz books, I have the first quiz book, and then the third one, I don't have the second one, for some bizarre reason. Then I have three Torchwood novels, which are from Miracle Day, that's why it's got Rex on the front. There is The Men Who Sold the World by Guy Adams. Firstborn by James Goss. And Long Time Dead, which is by Sarah, P Sarah Pinborough, it might be Sarah, but I don't know, so Sarah Pinborough. So those three, and then down here we have my ones which I actually recently picked up, I only had one, but then I went to my local charity shop and oh my god they have so many, so I bought them all. So we have Another Life, which is by Peter and Helides, and Helides, I don't even know how you say that, it's 
A N G H E L I D E S, which is a really bizarre name. Then there is Border Princes by Dan Abnett. Slow Decay by Andy Lane. And if you notice, the ones that have the same vague colours make up a picture. Isn't that cool? They make up a picture on the spines. That is awesome. Anyway, there is Something in the Water by Trevor Baxendale. They have the same writers for pretty much Doctor Who and Torchwood. Then there is Trace Memory, which is by David Llewellyn. I'm just going to turn you slightly because I keep thinking I have my ear in the way. Then there is The Twilight Streets by Gary Russell. And the final book is Pack Animals by Peter Angelides Thing. Angelides. I don't even know what that is, but that is that. Okay, so because I know what you're all thinking, there's obviously three shelves on a bookshelf, and I only showed you two. The bottom one actually has my DVDs on. It has my first three adventures with William Hartnell, who was the first Doctor. Then my complete first series with Christopher Eccleston, my second series, third series, fourth series, the specials, fifth series, sixth series, and series seven, part one. Then I have Torchwood series one and two. Then I have The Children of Earth and Miracle Day. Then I have my other favourites. I have Merlin series one, two, and three, and then Sherlock series one and two. So yeah, that is what's on the bottom shelf, and it needs no more explanation than that. Well guys, I hope you enjoyed this tour. It has been a while since I've done one and I really enjoyed making this even though my voice is now threatening to kill me. So yeah, I will see you in part... God damn, buses. Anyway, I will see you in part two and three which will contain my other two bookshelves and I hope you enjoy those as well as this one if you enjoyed this video. So give it a thumbs up if you enjoyed, share it with your friends and basically make me a happy booktuber. So yeah, bye. Look at him go! Look how much sun there is in Britain!